guys, welcome to Found Flicks. Even though it's only June, I'm already feeling in the Halloween spirit thanks to the newly released trailer for the new Halloween movie. I know, a new Halloween! It's been 10 years since the masked killer Michael Myers has slashed the silver screen, and the anticipation for this new entry has been through the roof. Earlier today, we finally got our first look at the movie, giving us a better idea of what to expect in this sequel to the original, which chooses to ignore every other entry in the series, and create its own new continuity. However, in spite of this, the trailer is jam-packed with homages and references to other entries, so in its own way, we'll respect the others even if no longer a part of the story. So let's check out the Halloween trailer, breaking it down and looking at the numerous references and easter eggs that pop up. We begin with a group of investigative journalists visiting the maximum security asylum that has housed Michael Myers for the last 40 years, with the intention of creating a real crime documentary about the infamous murders of three teenagers by him on Halloween in 1978. The screen flashes, hearing bullet shot sounds, these being the shots fired by Michael's childhood therapist Dr. Dr. Loomis. The original's ending had him taking out Michael, only for him to disappear soon after, leaving his fate unknown. This new version slightly alters even this, as we hear that after the encounter with Loomis, Michael was taken into custody the very same night. Martin and the others visit Mike in the prison yard, getting our first glimpse of him from afar, just kind of standing there enjoying the sun. And Martin has a little present for him, saying he has something he might like to see, pulling out the one and only William Shatner mask synonymous with Michael. Now heavily aged and cracked over the years. This seems like a really bad idea to me, and even the clearly insane inmates agree, all starting to freak out as he holds the mask up to its original owner. We then move on to Haddonfield where it is Halloween season, in a scene reminiscent of the opening conversation of the original. Here we meet Allison, Laurie Strode's granddaughter, going on about how her family always goes nuts this time of year. Well, no surprises there. And according to the director, Allison is an innocent character, as in she has no prior actual experience with the same horrors that her grandmother experienced. But of course, that normal life will soon be coming to an end, and she essentially will be acting as the Lori of the new film. As the kids begin to talk about Lori, we learn of another massive change to the film's story. Her friend asks, wasn't she Michael's sister? But Allison says that's not true. A large part of why Michael was obsessed with her in the original films was because of the familial connection. By removing this, it makes it more like Lori was the one who got away, and does help make Michael less defined by this and more just willing to kill anyone instead of solely focusing on his sister. We then see what Lori's been up to lately, and it seems that she's solely been spending her time preparing for the inevitable of Michael coming for her, barricading herself in a house lined with cameras and even a secret staircase under a counter. That is some sophisticated shit, Lori. The thing is, she doesn't have this set up because she's afraid of Michael or anything. It's because she wants him to get out so she can kill him once and for all which is pretty badass. And she definitely looks ready for him, which is a good thing because we cut to a father and son pulling up to a bus wrecked off the side of the road. I would assume caused by Michael. And all the patients inside have been set free. Lori mentions this to her adult daughter, Karen, who seems a bit skeptical. Lori saying that Michael escaped as a heavily armed man approaches the open bus door, most likely dead in a few moments. Well, looks like it's finally time for that showdown Lori's been waiting for all these years. At a roadside garage, Michael enters into a restroom intruding on a woman who we saw earlier was part of the documentary crew in a bathroom attack sequence that could be referencing H2O. We also see Martin at the garage where he discovers a bloody body of a mechanic. Similar events of Michael attacking a mechanic occurring both in one and four as well. It must be the mechanic's teeth Michael extracted, offering them to the woman and dropping them onto the floor scattering around. Then he's back to pulling out the door, seeing just a peek at the top of Michael's maskless face. And it does look like the hair of a man in his 60s. And really quickly, we see he slams a man who looks like Martin's head violently onto the door. He finally busts his way in, and she tries to crawl away, but it doesn't look too good for her, as he is then seen putting on his old mask, which they had. So chances are the whole crew is dead by now. Mike makes it to his old neighborhood on Halloween night, kids out in costumes trick-or-treating, and he bumps into one kid carrying a boombox, a reference to the same thing occurring in Halloween 2, letting Michael know where to head next. We then see where 
where he's probably at Karen's family's home, Allison in the car while Michael outside gets her dad with a knife in the throat, as Allison screams out helplessly in the car. Which must happen somewhat later as he's alive and well in the next scene, standing behind Lori wielding a shotgun, saying she's been waiting for him and he's been waiting for me. Also love Karen's Christmas sweater there. Maybe for a multitude of reasons she's not the biggest fan of Halloween and is like, bring Christmas on already. Lori obviously figures out quickly Michael is back, tracking him to the old neighborhood, screaming at kids to get away from the house. When some of the kids run, getting another reference. Two kids seen wearing the silver shamrock witch and skeleton masks from Halloween 3. Gun in hand, she spots Michael staring down at her from the window of a house. Based on her reaction, perhaps the first time she's seeing him, or not seeing him, that is, as she fires. A perfect shot that would have gotten him in the head, but rather the glass shatters as well as the image of Michael. This leads me to wonder if there might be an element of Lori losing her mind and that she is suffering from delusions here fueled by her obsession with Michael. Cutting to a scene between Martin and Lori, it seems he's a bit skeptical about this whole Michael thing. Lori asking if he doesn't believe in the boogeyman, beginning a quick montage of reasons why he should. This scene shown out of order. Here seeing the end result of Michael's visit, a chair knocked over, a jack-o'-lantern tossed into the fish tank, and what I would assume is Michael under that sheet, a reference to the original, and cutting to what must be near the climax as Michael makes it to Lori's bunker cabin as she searches the area, calling out for him with a shotgun, entering into that safety room she built too. Then moving to the two outside of the bunker, mano a mano, Lori holding what looks like his knife, lunging at him with it, but she gets blocked. In our final scene, seeing a babysitter looking after a scared kid asking her to close the closet door. She tries repeatedly, but seems stuck, and opens it, this time revealing Michael inside lifting his knife. And even though we don't see it, she is certainly killed, since earlier we see her bloodied arm trying to reach out, which must be right after this. Though we don't know what happened to the kid, and that's kind of disturbing if Michael kills him too. I guess we'll have to wait and see how hardcore he really is. This brings us to the conclusion of the Halloween trailer and my in-depth breakdown. Suffice to say, the trailer does not disappoint, and it's really awesome to see one of the original horror giants back on the big screen after so many years, especially in a new take that looks to bring back the series to its roots, as well as paying homage to the other entries via all those callbacks and references. What did you guys think of the Halloween trailer? Are you excited to see Michael Myers back on the big screen? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.